Hey everybody, Pastor Zach here. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today through our weekly discussion. As always, it's an opportunity for us to be in community together, to share thoughts, to share questions, to have some fun, to even share some smart remarks. Um, was curious what struck you this week. Um, maybe the solar eclipse. Maybe you got to see it. Maybe you didn't. Uh, maybe you traveled far. Maybe you went out in your backyard uh, to see it. I got to see part of it. It was a little cloudy where we were, uh, but it was pretty cool. And just to to see the connection, the the interaction of all of these planetary um, events moving in in synchronicity that that they end up crossing paths and that you know we have the opportunity to realize what is going on and to how to see it and how to experience it um was pretty cool and and i think it was something that brought us that brought people us together that has this opportunity to connect and to encourage um and and i think it's vital in our world today to remind ourselves of that to remind each other of what actually connects us what are we um how are we connected how are we engaged in the work um of serving one another um i found it really interesting i've seen it a couple of times now that um people are posting about joe olstein and how uh he made all this money is making all this money and um and then in the same breath saying well then taxes or churches should be taxed. And my response to that is, um, yeah, $54 million or whatever he makes to me is a little excessive. You know, he's an author, he's a speaker. There's, there's a lot of other things other than just him, um, and the church that goes into it. But what happens is when we start to do that, when we start to tax churches, what happens is they have to reduce what the good that they're doing so that they can pay those taxes. Um, and honestly, a lot of the churches that I know, probably 99% of the churches, um, would have to significantly cut back the good that they are doing, the care that they're offering the people around them, um, and those around the world to, to cover some of these taxes. And some of them probably couldn't do it and would end up failing um, in in the financial aspect of it. And and so I think it's something that, you know, when, when we see these things on Facebook or wherever, and we go, oh, that's really good, that makes a lot of sense, um, we need to take a step back and, and look at it and go, does it, does it really? Um, I've commented on a couple of people because they'll, they'll, someone will highlight a Bible passage that's completely taken out of context. And, um, but it proves their point. Let me tell you, if you want to prove a point, go through the Bible. You can find it. You can find just about any point you want to prove um, and find a biblical basis for it if you take it out of context. But you have to look at the context. You have to look at what was going on. You have to read the whole chapter or the book or, you know, see what was going on rather than just go, well, you know, this in Leviticus, this says this. Um, there was a great clip and I'll have to see if I can find it, but in the show, the West wing many, many years ago, and I've, I never watched the show, but I saw the clip and basically it's, you know, this, the president going off on this, um, reality or this TV, I guess she was a radio host who was quoting Bible passages, but the, the Bible passages he was quoting were kind of absurd. You know, I remember one was that um, then it was the Washington Redskins because they, you know, touched a, a pigskin, a football, were they uh, unclean? You know, so it's, we, ha we have to look at it. We have to understand what all of that means. Um, and I think we have to be in dialogue about that. That is one of the things that that my education helped me and continues to do my continued education is how do we see the Bible at work in our lives and what is the overarching theme as opposed to what can I pull out to make my point? And when we start trying to make it about our point versus God's point, 
I, I think we miss something. I, I think the the nature and the the promise of of God of of the Bible of the gospel is lost because we quickly want to make it about us, and it's about God. The Bible is about God. It's about God's relationship with humanity. And it's about trying to nurture and build it and find ways to encourage, support, care for, frustrate, um, you know, living into those relationships of what does it mean? What does it mean to care for the world? Um, what does it mean to care for one another? What does it mean to care for the stranger? Who is the stranger? What does it mean for God to, to love us and for us to love one another? What does all of that look like? And the Bible spells it out pretty clearly. And yet, so often, we want to say, well, the Bible says we can separate this person or we can cast this person out or we can draw this line here. And... Jesus doesn't do that. You know, those that were outcast, those that um, society had deemed unworthy, um, Jesus interacted with them. And all of them that he interacted with, it was to build community. It was to invite them back into community. It was for them to go back to where they lived so that they would be brought back into that relationship with each other. And I think it's important for us to remember that. I think it's important for us to live into that more fully and to find a new way forward to be engaged in the work that God has for us, to be engaged in civility of, of caring for one another, of finding ways forward, um, of finding opportunities of forgiveness and grace. Uh, I did a whole sermon this past Sunday just on forgiveness. Um, so if you're curious, you can check out our church website or our Facebook page about that. I have not got them up on YouTube. You'll, hopefully this afternoon, uh, those will be clipped and, and up on our YouTube channel if you want to watch them there. But I encourage you to, to see where it goes. Um, to going back to the eclipse, you know, the, the size of the sun versus the size of the moon and the because of of perspective, that little moon can block out the sun as a matter of perspective. What happens when we, as the moon, try to cover God, yet it doesn't last, and it clearly doesn't completely remove the sun. The sun just ends up shining brighter once it's removed. Once we remove ourselves from it, once we remove our egos, once we remove our expectations, um, our lines in the sand, we see that God's lines are there to welcome, are there to invite, are there to encourage, are there to care for. God's lines are there to, to be exclusively inclusive. Um, what do I mean by that? Maybe that's for next time. Maybe you share what you think I mean by that. And I'll let you know if anyone gets close. How about that? We'll do that, and then we'll talk about that next week. All right? Sounds good. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, comment, share, ask questions, be in community with one another. I'm excited this Sunday we start our new members program, our new members series, so we're excited to bring some new people in to join. Uh, in new and exciting ways, we have a new member who's going to be virtual um, and so we're looking forward to that. So that means wherever you are, if you want to join as a member of the church here, you don't have to be local. We can have you join as a uh, virtual member. So I'm really excited for that as we continue to move forward 
in faith and as we continue to seek what God has in store for us. I want to thank you all. As always, share this if you feel so moved. You can always ask questions. If you have something you want to talk to me directly about, you can uh, direct message me. You can find ways to connect through our website, through our Facebook page, through me. Uh, join us for worship at 8.30 and 10.30 on site and online as we continue this journey of faith together. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. We'll see you soon. Bye.